This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This is a lecture on interest rate options, which is chapter 20 of the um, paper B4 course notes. Um, now, we've already looked at several ways of hedging interest rate risk. And the ways we've looked at very much fixed the interest rate. Um, futures didn't exactly fix it um, because of the basis risk. But otherwise, it did more or less fix it. But interest rate options are different in a lot of ways. Uh, where they're particularly useful is, uh, again, assuming we're borrowing money, suppose uh, we're pretty certain that the interest rate's going to fall, in which case, of course, um, we'd prefer just to let the loan, leave the loan at risk and pay lower interest. But, of course, we might be wrong and interest rates might go up. Uh, and if interest rates do go up, we've got a problem. So, I'm sure you can already guess that an interest rate option effectively uh, fixes a maximum interest rate. Uh, assuming, of course, that we're borrowing money, it's uh, then that we'd want to limit it and have a maximum. So I, I'm going to assume right the way through, as is probably the case in the exam, that you're borrowing money. Uh, and I did say in uh, earlier, when we looked at interest rate guarantees, which were effectively an option, that if you fix a maximum interest rate, you're fixing an interest rate cap. And I'm sure um, you'll be expecting that if we are able to fix a maximum interest rate, so we're limiting the maximum we'll pay, but if the interest rate gets low, we get the benefit of it, uh, then we'll need to pay a premium. Whether or not we exercise the option. So, so far, I hope, so far, so good, no problem. However, where the problem does come is that when we talk about traded options, which is what we're dealing with here, options that you can buy and sell on the exchanges, uh, in fact, you can't buy an option directly on interest rates. The option that you can buy, you buy the right to buy or sell futures at a fixed price on a future date. Now that's what the option is, and that's what makes it um, not arithmetically hard, don't worry too much, but makes it a, a little bit difficult for some people to get to grips with. But what, you're going to, what we're going to buy is the right to buy or sell, buy the, the right to buy or sell futures at a fixed price on a future date. And before we look at a proper example, just to tell you how we can use it, just suppose I told you that today uh, the interest rate is 10%. Well, of course, forgetting all the practical problems and so on, um, in a perfect world, the futures price would be 90. Again, uh, it'll involve um, taking a loan on a future date. Uh, perhaps we think the interest rate's going to fall, we want to get the benefit, 
But suppose I told you, just in case things went wrong, we wish to limit the maximum possible interest to, let's say, 12%. So I think rates will go down, no problem. If they go up, I'll accept paying up to 12%, but I want to make sure that I never, ever pay more than 12%. What would be the equivalent futures price to 12%? Well, again, in a perfect world, it would be a futures price, 100 minus 12. The equivalent futures price would be 88 And so what I'm going to do is this. Now think about this. If interest rates are lower than 12, I'll pay the actual interest and I'll be happy. End of story. But I want to make sure if the interest rate turns out to be 13%, 14%, 15%, I want to make sure that I only end up paying 12%. Well, what's going to happen if, just suppose, the interest went to 15%. What would happen to the futures price? Well, the futures price again, I'm talking perfect world. I know there's basis risk. We'll deal with a full one shortly. But if the interest rate did get as high as 15, the futures price would fall to 85. So what, what can I do? What I could do is this. If I now buy an option to sell futures at 88, now then think about that. What I'm going to do is buy an option to sell futures at 88. We're not going to actually buy or sell any futures today, not at all. I've just got the right to sell futures at 88. And so what's going to happen if interest rates do go up to 15? I'll pay 15% on the loan. But I have a right to sell futures at 88. So what I'd do, I'd use my option... I'll sell the futures at 88, but I don't have any futures. How can I sell futures at 88? Ah, I'd immediately buy them. And you've just told me that if interest rates are 15%, the futures price would only be 85. And so using my option will give me 88 minus 5, it'll give me a 3% profit. And what's the end result going to be? I'll have paid 15% on the loan, but by using my option, I'll get a 3% profit because I'll sell some futures at 88 and buy them because the price is only 85. And of course, the net result, pay 15 and get 3% profit, the net result will be I'll pay 12%. Now, that's how we're going to use them. Interest might turn out to be 16%, you see, but if interest is 16, the futures price will only be 84. I'll make a 4% profit. But the end result, by, sell, by buying the option to sell futures at 88, I'll be limiting the interest rate to 12%. Now, if you've got that, then in a moment, the workings... Uh, aren't too bad. There's a, a few bits of rules to learn. Uh, but you do really need to make sure you're clear about the principle. We're about, uh, well, not about, sorry. I'm going to look at how uh, premiums are quoted and then we'll do a full example. But it really is worth, if you need, to go back through this bit of the lecture again slowly.
uh, and make sure you've got the idea. However, the first bit of um, learning, if that's the right word, is that I've already said if you're going to buy any options, there is going to be a premium payable. We need to pay a premium whether we use it or not. Uh, and with traded options, in a rather similar way to foreign currency options, the premiums are quoted in a table. And if you look at page 121 of the course notes, page 121, uh, there's an example there, which isn't an ex exam level one. We'll do an exam level one after, but just explaining what the different headings mean in the table. So let's run through these. When we've sorted out the headings, which I don't think will take too long, then we can look at a full example of how we'll use them. Um, I'll use the ABCs that are on the page. First of all, the strike price. Well, remember I said earlier, um, the option you'll be buying is the right to buy or sell futures at a fixed price. Well, the strike price is this fixed price. And so just for example, a strike price here of 94.25, it would mean that you were buying the right to buy or sell futures at a fixed 94.25. As you can see, there's a choice, 94.5. There could be several to choose from, but that's the strike. Um, it, we've got calls, puts there. Well, the price will charge for this depends on whether I want the right to buy futures or sell futures. A call option is the right to buy futures at the fixed price. <clears throat> a put option is the right to sell futures. Now, as I hope I made clear earlier in this lecture, if you're borrowing money, you'll always buy a put option. I'll repeat the logic again when we do a full example, uh, but otherwise go back to the first bit of this lecture and listen again slowly. But it'll always be a put option if you're borrowing money. Uh, the next one, the months. Well, here should be no problem, uh, assuming you've already been through the foreign exchange ones. Uh, but the month, September, December, March. Uh, if the European options you can exercise, you can use on the last day of the relevant month. Whereas if they're American style options, you can exercise at any time up to the last day of the relevant month. Uh, I'll jump one to the numbers in the columns, E. Well, the numbers in the columns, I think very clearly, are the premiums premiums payable, although how we actually use those numbers, you'll have to be patient. I'll show you when we do a full example. Uh, finally, jumping back to D, uh, what does sterling options 500,000 points of 100% mean? Well, the 500,000 is the contract size. You'll always be told contract size and you'll have to do in fixed size contracts. Uh, the points of 100% are 
Well, again, you're going to have to be patient. That's telling us how we actually calculate the premium. And as I've said, I'll show you that shortly when we do a full example. Well, we'll break this lecture here, but then in the second lecture, we'll do a full one. We'll do example six uh, on page 122. So it'd be a good idea to have a quick uh, look at the example first, a read of it, and then um, start the lecture.